Hello, fiendlings. How the hell are you? It's a lovely Friday here in the blazing hell that is Houston in summer. Why is it lovely? Is it lovely because of the extremely high pollen count? Is it lovely because of the lack of rain? Or is it in fact lovely because there's so much dust in the air I can barely breathe? In truth, it's none of those things. It's a lovely day because it's release day for the Black Audiobook. That's right. Today is the day you can purchase the Black 2nd Edition audiobook narrated by Joe Hempel. It's an Audible exclusive for the next few months, so your only option at the moment is to go up to Audible, Amazon, or iTunes and spend a credit or some cash. If you do happen to purchase it, please do me a solid and give it a review as soon as you finish it. Reviews help sell books, and audiobooks are no different. Apart from that little marketing news, when last we spoke, Extinction stood at 12,000 words. It's now at 28,000 and moving pretty fast. I haven't begun recording any of it yet for the patrons and members, in part because I haven't written the beginning of the book. Yeah, you heard. I haven't written the beginning and probably won't until next week. With that, I'm going to get out of here and get some more writing done. Be safe, have a great week, and we'll talk again real soon. Here's episode 13 of Station 3. Chapter 17 Zilf found himself in a wide corridor, the bulkheads obviously thicker on this side, since they provided the skeleton for the module. Several ceiling lights flashed yellow, and a transmission kept pinging Zilf's comms. The module was trying to tell him the refinery was about to collapse. Tell me something I don't know, Zilf muttered off comms. He slowly advanced out of the corridor and moved to the nearest load-bearing bulkhead. His torch pointed at another hatch, separating them from the barracks' interior. Come on, Yuri, Zilf said. Get away from the module hatch. That refinery is going to implode any second. Yeah, yeah, Yuri said, trying to sound nonchalant and failing miserably. He left the corridor and moved to the side opposite Zilf. Another rumble through their boots. Let's get further in, Yuri said. Don't want to risk it. Zilf knew what he meant. When the refinery module finally lost pressure, something he was sure would happen in a minute or two. The module would be destroyed. If Shenzhou designed Station 2 properly, the refinery would collapse into a massive single piece of metal that would no doubt sink to the bottom of this alien ocean without affecting the rest of Station 2, namely the personnel module. If, however, Shenzhou had gone cheap, this module would likely be destroyed along with the refinery, meaning he and Yuri might as well have tried to fix things rather than choosing to GTFO. Zilf moved to the inner hatch while Yuri maintained position just a few meters away. His plasma torch pointed to the ceiling. After connecting to the interface, Zilf cracked the lockout and ordered the hatch to open. It didn't. Shit. Zilf tried again and received an error message. Fuck. What is it? Yuri asked, his voice grim and flat. I'm guessing an actuator bit the dust, either that or someone sabotaged it, Zilf said. He brought up the schematics for the hatch mechanism. Might be able to burn the outer... The boom was impossible not to hear. He felt it in his bones, his ears pounded with the vibration, and Station 2's barracks twisted and canted a few degrees before righting itself. Several waves of smaller vibrations nibbled at his toes and spine. When Yuri spoke, he sounded both relieved and terrified. That was the refinery. Expect so, Zilf said. He brought his plasma torch to the left-hand side of the hatch and activated it. The blue teardrop became a hellish stream of plasma that quickly burned through the metal. Zilf lowered the power and traced a small square around the area he'd burned. When he finished, the detached piece of metal hit the deck exposing three locking mechanisms. Good thinking. Yuri said. I would have just burned through the hatch. That's why I'm me, Zilf said as he retracted the plasma torch and replaced it with his engineering tools. And you are you. It only took him a moment to find the problem, but it was a big one. The circuit board that connected the actuators had been fried, probably from a power surge. Zilf was surprised the onboard computer hadn't been rendered inoperable as well. If Griggs and Harvey had come this way, how did they get past this? Unless, of course, it happened once the reactors started going critical while he and Yuri were still in the refinery's bowels. Bad luck. Zilf sighed. Now I have to be you, he said before reaching in with his non-tool hand, 
grabbing the first actuator and pulling down. The steel groaned and the suit motors whined, the sound buzzing in Zilf's ears. The actuator bent before snapping with a dry crack. He lowered his hand to the next and began the same process. Shit, Yuri said. We're not going to be able to secure it after you're done. Not true, Zilf said as he moved to the third actuator. We can seal it from the other side. Weld it. Yuri clicked his tongue. That will block us if we have to come back this way. Zilf paused before saying, To go where? The refinery is gone and I'm willing to bet so is the dock. The lift is gone and we don't even know if the tubes are still intact. We're stuck here unless we find a way out. The third actuator snapped beneath his hand. He bent the broken steel arms outward until they exposed the lock mechanism. He smashed it with a solid punch from his non-tool hand. The red light above the hatch flickered between red and green. Zilf stood and grabbed the hatch's manual wheel. It didn't turn easily, but it did turn. The metal groaned and complained before spinning freely. He smiled as the light above the hatch turned bright green. Easy as walking. Yuri harumphed. Try walking for a meter of snow. Not so easy. Zilf grinned. Ready? Ready, Yuri said, his tool arm dropping slightly, but the plasma torch still aimed above Zilf's head. Just get out of the way. Like always, Zilf said, and opened the hatch. He moved a meter to the left, giving Yuri a clear field of fire through the opening. Strobing light flashed from the barracks' interior, the colors dancing at Yuri's feet. Zilf watched his partner, waiting for Yuri to either call clear or start up his plasma torch. A moment passed, then another. Yuri? I know, Yuri said. Take a look. Blinking in confusion, Zilf returned to the hatch and peered around it. The overhead lights had become a mix of reds and yellows punctuated by brief periods of near darkness. Zilf's tool arm vibrated as it cycled, his plasma torch popping forward, the tip immediately coming to life. Can't see shit with all that strobing. Da, Yuri said. How did Griggs and Harvey get through this? Magic? I don't know, Zilf said. I'll ask when we catch up. Yuri snorted. How do you want to clear? Good question, Zilf thought. As he told Yuri, there was nowhere to go other than through the barracks. The barracks' emergency exits were beyond the corridor that led into the strobing hellscape of light. Where did they lead? Just because they were marked on a 3D diagram didn't mean that showed shit about what was beyond the hatch. It might lead to an escape route that led to the surface, or it might lead directly into the subsurface ocean. It was meant for emergencies, suiting up, and for breaks. It wasn't meant for long-term occupation. Look on the bright side, his father's voice said in Farsi. It would seem there are far fewer occupants to feed. Reki would have said no shit to that understatement. She really didn't have much of a vocabulary apart from profanities. Zilf's father would have been horrified. Zilf grinned in spite of himself. Going to search for signals, Zilf said, and activated his scanner. Noise. Sensors screaming through interfaces no longer actively monitored. Nearly every piece of machinery on this level of the barracks was either malfunctioning or on backup power. The flashing lights' irregular rhythm was just fast enough at times to trip Zilf's light filters to keep him from going blind. Each time he caught just a slice of the light, his filters were caught coming out of their phase. He deactivated the auto filter and set the filter to his lowest opacity and quickly blinked through the menus to find the camera interface. He locked one suit cam into blue mode and told it to capture the scene at 240 frames per second. The program went live and once it finished, Zilf replayed it frame by frame. With he and Yuri's suit lights still on, the photons pounded into the room even though the cameras couldn't distinguish what they illuminated with all the lights malfunctioning. In the space between the long and jittery blasts of light, his suit cam captured the room beyond both in the infrared and blue spectrums. The onboard computer then adjusted the images for what it considered maximum clarity. Camel shit, as his father would say. Damn things always needed fine-tuning. The infrared image was the first to finish. Zilf's mouth opened in response. The first level of the barracks was easily 100 by 100 by 10 meters in size. Ten aisles of suit racks stretched from one side of the level to the other, each capable of holding 12 suits at a time. Or would, if three of the racks hadn't fallen over and leaned into one another like crooked teeth. The suits, lightly armored and built more for protection from radiation than severe impacts, were mostly flattened. 
If they'd been like that for days, rather than hours, every suit in those racks would be useless. But that was the other interesting item. Most of the suits were missing from their racks. Zilf counted the remains of at least a dozen suits, most looking as though they'd been torn to pieces by a dull, underpowered buzzsaw. A few indistinct shapes on the deck were undoubtedly suit legs and arms. Or, he told himself, suddenly wishing he could spit, human arms and legs. Not a cheery thought. Can we reset the system? The interface is online. Zilf nodded and suddenly wanted to smack himself in the head. Good idea, but let me clear right and left first. Get another idea of what we're walking into. Okay, Yuri said after a breath. Move in a few meters, take your pictures, and get back out. If something comes at you, get low. Low, Zilf thought. There was only so low you could get in a heavy. Laying prone was a joke, but he knew what Yuri meant. Spray and pray. Without a clear target, he'd listen to Zilf, set the torch to create an arc of blazing plasma, and hose down any threats. Zilf exhaled and moved forward into the onslaught of light. Two steps, three, four, five. Each increased the tension in his muscles and the adrenaline in his blood. The blast of light stopped for an instant, and he thought he saw something move in the shadows. He waited for an attack, but it didn't come. Movement, he said through the comms, but no threat. Yet, Yuri said. Covering. Zilf didn't respond. He lingered another moment before turning 180 degrees to face the other bulkhead. Again, he braced himself for something to come at him, but despite the invisible cold fingers tickling his spine, the hackles on his neck standing straight up, and the reptilian portion of his human brain screaming at him that he was in danger, nothing happened. He turned another 90 degrees, so he once again faced into the room and slowly walked backward. Each meter felt like an eternity. Once beyond the hatch again, he moved beside it, so he was protected by the bulkhead. You see anything move? Zilf asked as he trolled through his camera footage. No, Yuri said. Just your fat back. Dorak, Zilf said. Yuri grunted in response, but Zilf knew from experience the big Russian was smiling. It didn't take long to isolate the frames. To the left of the open hatch was what Zilf assumed was the suit cleaning station. Each worker would visit it after their shift. Although the airlock sanitized the suits for microbes as well as extreme radiation, the cleaning stations did the rest of the job, disassembled the suit, and deposited a near-naked human into a normal shower. Once disassembled, the systems repackaged the suit and transferred it back to its rack. The building looked as though it could handle three or four suits at a time. Even using the filters, Zilf couldn't tell what lay on the deck near the cleaning station. Debris of some kind, but there was so much of it, it was impossible to make out distinct shapes. When he isolated the other side, he saw the QM counter where tools were checked out and checked in. There was also a lift, presumably leading to the next level, or maybe levels, considering infrastructure and foundation had to be below them. Something about the isolated frame bothered him. He unfocused his eyes and allowed the photo to become mere smears. Looking at everything and nothing at all, he slowly focused his eyes and saw an indistinct shadow cast by something hidden behind the QM loadout point. It hadn't looked like anything until he actually focused on it. He zoomed in on the corner and stared at the image. Fucking, he wheezed over the comms. Zilf squirted the image to Yuri's hut. Want to tell me what that is? Yuri was silent for a moment. Bit of shoulder, half a head, and... He paused. Very long arm. Zilf hissed a sigh off comms. So he wasn't seeing things after all. That can't be real though, right? He said. Don't see how. Has to be multiple objects casting shadow. But I'm not sure why they'd be behind the counter? Zilf went through the other images looking for shadows he might have missed, but didn't see any. He did, however, zoom in on the debris near the cleaning station, and this time, he was certain there was at least one body in that mess. He shivered and said, Think we have at least one casualty, but we'll have to wait for the reset. He removed the images from the HUD and took a cover stance at the side of the hatch. Reset now. Chapter 18 The flashing lights all died at once, leaving both he and Yuri lit up like torches in a cave. Yuri unfocused his suit lights and then turned them up to full. A ten-meter-wide hemisphere of light banished the shadows and darkness ahead and around them. Zilf turned his lights off and waited for an all-clear. 
Yuri remained quiet. His helmet pointed straight ahead, two alarm held out before him, as though he'd thrown a punch and had frozen in that stance. Zilf added Yuri's helmet cam to his HUD. Patches of green covered the floor in dozens of places. Four of the ceiling vents had been popped open, stalactites of ooze hanging from their corners, the points glistening as though fresh. The collapsed suit racks lay directly beneath those vents, and splotches of the goo topped with sprays of blood marred the suits' surfaces. He didn't see human flesh or limbs, but anything could be buried beneath the suits. Looks very dangerous, Yuri said. You go first. Zilf rolled his eyes and peered around the corner and into the room. From his vantage point, he could only see the edge of the cleaning facility and nothing of the racks. No movement. How's the reset coming? Not good, Yuri said, and forwarded the feed to Zilf's HUD. Zilf scanned the text and frowned. Now the backups are blown? I believe that's the non-technical description. The good news is the fucked up emergency lights aren't coming back on. The bad news is that no lights are coming back at all. Or anything else, Zilf said. Only power left is the residuals. Fuck. The readout blinked out of existence, a broken signal icon flashing on his HUD. And there go the residuals. No more juice means all the hatches will be manual, too. Zilf pursed his lips. Unless we get lucky enough for them to have a functioning battery backup. Yuri did his best impression of a horse whinny, which sounded more like a goat with throat cancer. For some reason, the Russian was extremely proud of it. And ice is hot. Zilf sighed heavily. Yuri was right about that. Someone, or some things, he corrected himself, had mangled the emergency reactors in the refinery, essentially causing a complete meltdown and ensuring the module collapsed. The airlock hatch had been jammed. Then, of all things, the warning lights had been set to a blinding dance in rhythm. That took skill. Someone had programmed them to do that. Harvey and Griggs had to have come through here. Did they set up the light show in order to get through to the next level? Or... Sure wish Griggs had left us another log drop, Zilf said. Explain this shit. Yuri nodded. Yes, would have been nice. What do you think? I think the lights were set up to do that, and I think maybe we fucked up by killing them. Zilf fell into a combat stance, his torch blazing at the end of his tool arm. I think we head for the suit cleaning station, he said. Might have a way down. Okay. Clear the corners. Zilf activated the external mics and turned up the gain. His ears immediately filled with the sound of hissing steam and the occasional rumble coming through the exterior bulkheads. More than likely, the infrastructure was still settling after the refinery collapsed. The hiss, however, was drowning out his ability to hear anything else. After adjusting the frequency, the hiss all but disappeared. To test the settings, he tapped a foot on the deck. The sound was somewhat muted as well. About as good as it gets, he thought. He took a deep breath. Get your mics on. Yuri snorted. Already did, slow pokey. Zilf smiled and took a deep breath. When he exhaled, he said, Moving, and crouch walked through the hatch. Without the blasts of light creating havoc for his filters, he had clear vision throughout the massive room. The cleaning station was as static as it had been before. No changes to the environment. He stepped forward another meter to give Yuri some room. Zilf peered at his suit cameras and focused in on the rear cam just as the mics picked up the sounds of soft footfalls. He saw edges of illuminated deck and bulkhead and something coming at him with incredible speed. That something blotted out the screen before smashing into Zilf's back and knocking him against the bulkhead. Yuri cried out and a hemisphere of plasma rushed through the hatch a mere two meters away from Zilf. A suit alarm rang in his ears, or maybe that was the result of the jolt he just suffered. No, his HUD flashed yellow, displaying damage to his armor. Zilf's vision righted itself, but just as his mind made sense of what he was seeing, it vapor-locked. The arc of blue plasma had set fire to something that was at least three meters tall, if it could stand up straight. Its back hunched at an odd angle, a large whip-like limb jutting out of its spine and draped over its shoulder, and the whip's tip looked like a thick, barbed arrowhead. The thing's skin puckered and rippled beneath the indigo fire, and it roared a sound that hurt his mind. 
no longer worried about stealth, the thing crashed sideways on two thick trunk-like legs, its webbed feet ending in claws. Yuri's sustained blast of plasma tracked the creature as it sped toward the suit racks. It's back a mass of flames, the whip repeatedly reaching toward Zilf and snapping at the end of its arc. The arc of plasma disappeared. Zilf! Yuri yelled through the comms. I'm good, Zilf said and stepped away from the bulkhead. He narrowed his light's focus and shined them where the thing had gone. Slick droplets of green goo covered the deck like blood spatter. Check your armor, Yuri said. He gestured with his free hand. That doesn't look good. Zilf blinked through the menus and chose the current warning alert. He stared at the text before assessing the damage again. Yuri, don't let that thing hit you like it did me. What's the damage? Perforated the outer layer of armor with a one millimeter diameter puncture, Zilf said. Yuri wheezed through the comms. You say that they can? Zilf repeated himself, knowing Yuri had asked for effect. I get hit there again, it might get all the way through. Noted, the Russian said after cursing. I say we forget stealth. Agreed, Zilf said. That thing came from my six. Come through and clear it. Copy, Yuri said. Zilf's rear cam showed him a twilight view of the QM counter tool shop along the bulkhead. He couldn't see anything moving back there, but he hadn't seen anything before he'd been hit either. Because you were careless, his father said in his mind. He'd made that particular statement after his son had blindly stepped on a shard of volcanic glass. That particular cut had required physical stitches rather than nano patches, and he still had the scar on the bottom of his foot as a reminder. You were careless, his father had said as he wrapped his son's wound with an expensive tunic, exposing his own naked skin to the sun. Because of what you didn't see around you, when you saw nothing, you should have known you hadn't seen nothing. His father, enigmatic as ever, had meant the ocean bottom that lay a mere meter and a half below where Zilf had been swimming. Because young Zilf had been swimming instead of treading water, he hadn't looked before plunging downward and flipping over. If he had, he'd have realized he'd traveled into the patch of igneous rock and volcanic glass. Didn't see what wasn't there, he said aloud. What? Zilf, what? Yuri stammered. Clear the ceiling, Zilf replied and added Yuri's cam feed to his HUD. The view tilted upward and Yuri hitched in a breath at the same time as Zilf. A vent some four meters away had been popped open, fresh runners of green goo dripping from one corner. Fuck, Yuri said. He raised his tool arm and a much more focused arc of plasma shot from the torch. The blast lasted less than a second, but elicited an inhuman scream of rage from somewhere above them. Fuck, he said again. Zilf put a meter of space between himself and the bulkhead, his head and tool arm elevated and scanning the ceiling. The cleaning station was less than five meters away, and just above its entrance? An exhaust vent, its screen still intact. This would be easier if we had a third, Yuri said. His cam feed showed he was doing much the same as Zilf was. We have a vent at the entrance to the cleaning facility, Zilf said. Of course we do, Yuri said flatly. Closed? Yes, Zilf said. He aimed one of his suit lights directly at the vent and set its power to maximum. Harsh white light burst through the shadows and illuminated every feature of the screen. A few green globules clung to the grating, but the locks were intact, or so it appeared. He paused for a moment, certain something would move or cast a shadow through the bright light. Nothing did. Moving, Zilf said. Copy. No push-pull this time. The two men moved in lockstep, Zilf forward and Yuri backward. Zilf's eyes barely touched the view directly in front of him. He was too busy checking his other suit cams. Apart from having bulkheads to their backs, there was no cover to be had. Not only were they vulnerable from threats moving across the deck, they also had to worry about the ceiling. Or any place with a vent, Zilf corrected himself. One meter, two meters. Zilf continued flicking his eyes between the vent and their flank. If Reki had designed a training scenario like this, she would have asked the obvious question. Where is your third? Then she would have asked how Zilf and Yuri thought they were going to protect their flanks since the enemy had cover from the racks. The remaining empty suits continued to look more and more like malformed shadows, or perhaps the amorphous features of some creature. Shark swims, shark doesn't panic, 
his father said in his mind. Neither does Turtle. Shark could get away, he wanted to say to his father. Turtle could hide in its shell, but there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide. He clenched the fingers on his tool arm, and the bright blue teardrop grew to five centimeters long. Watch the flank, Yuri. Watch the flank, Yuri, the Russian said mockingly. Watch the fucking ceiling, Zilf. Zilf didn't reply. Another meter. The vent was almost directly above him now. Rather than continuing forward, he stepped laterally until his back hit the bulkhead. Now he had an angle on the vent, the cleaning station entrance, and even the flank. Yuri was still more than six meters away. Covering, Zilf said. Hug the bulkhead and move up. Copy, Yuri said. No mirth in his voice now. He half-turned, checked the flank once more, the bright ambient light from his suit illuminating the pile of debris near the crumpled racks and causing a horror show of shadows. In that instant, Zilf was certain he saw that tall, lumbering thing hiding back there, or maybe just its whip peering above the racks like some kind of eye. But when Yuri turned again to face Zilf, the shadow dissolved into what it had been all along, nothing more than a trick of the light. Adrenaline buzzed in his blood while he waited for Yuri to close the painfully short distance of four meters to join him. Zilf continued flicking his eyes between the cameras. Step, step, step. Yuri hugged the bulkhead and walked until he was within half a meter of Zilf. His tool arm extended and pointed at the center of the room. Okay, Yuri said. Now what? Your turn to be sentry, Zilf said. Why? What are you doing? Zilf gestured to the cleaning station. Only halfway in its track, the vertical entrance hatch looked as though it had taken a severe blow or maybe hit something at high speed. Regardless, it wasn't opening normally. He'd have to force it. Construction. Yuri whistled. Well, get to it then. I haven't got all day. Right, Zilf mumbled. 